Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to install software through Linux without using the terminal. Crazy. Now, just as a quick note, this video is aimed at new users of Linux, not experienced users. Um, there is a quite a large amount of Linux users who will only use the terminal. It's fine. I use the terminal quite a lot. But um, the past few years, there's been a lot of development, a lot of effort put into the growth of application browsers, software management tools, and, and other software to help people install and maintain packages and software on their operating systems, on their versions of Linux. And a lot of new users have been moving over to Linux and I get questions about this because they want to move over to Linux, but there's a few memes and stereotypes about Linux, about using the terminal to install software and do basically things that don't require a terminal in other operating systems. Uh, the terminal itself has some really good advantages. There's a lot of really good things in Linux, especially behind the scenes that you can get really involved with and play with. But for new people, the terminal, it's just not approachable. And there are really great ways in Linux to install software. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you the package manager in Manjaro. Um, it uses uh, PAMAC and it basically is uh, a user interface, uh, graphical user interface way of installing software, which you can do through the terminal, but has a nice user interface. I'm going to show you different repositories and what they are. And I'm also going to show you uh, the difference between different types of programs and software you can install on Linux and what the differences are and what that means for you going forward with updating your operating system. Hopefully this will be really interesting for you. So let's crack on. I'm going to switch over to my screen now. So as you can see, you can see my screen here. I'm using Manjaro, as I've said, if my interface looks different, don't worry. You can change the interface in Linux really easily. This is how mine looks like. Um, I'm going to click on the icon at the top left for you. If you haven't changed your interface, it'll be in the bottom left of the screen. And then you're going in favorites um, or in all programs, you're going to see add remove software. If you click on that, you're going to get this browser. Now already this looks awesome. You can see bunches of icons, names. This is really great, obviously. Um, there's a couple of housekeeping items to do first. If you click on the three dots in the top right hand corner uh, and go to preferences, it's gonna ask you for your password. So do that. You're gonna click on third party. Now the official repositories for Manjaro are really well maintained. There's quite a lot of software, but um, one of the memes which needs to end about Linux is that there somehow isn't software for it because it's not listed on like, you know, Elgato's website or Razor's website. It's like they have a Windows version, a Mac version, but not a Linux version. If you enable AUR, this is another repository uh, for Arch-based distributions like Manjaro, this is massive. The repository is huge. It's probably the largest collection of software that you can find anywhere, not just in Linux, but anywhere. Um, so you're going to see a lot of software here. So you want to click enable on that uh, and it should be enabled by default, but click on check for updates. Um, you want it to automatically update, obviously, and keep built packages. Um, if they're not enabled, make sure you've enabled both of those. Um, and as a backup, as you can see here, I have Flatpak and Snap. Enable both of those. Once you've enabled those, you can click X and it will be enabled. You don't need to restart the browser for it to work. Starting next week, uh, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch at 8 p.m. Central European time. And what I would love is to take the conversation that we have over to there. Last year, you guys were awesome. Uh, the likes, the comments, the interaction on my channel, despite the size, was really uh really honorable, really rewarding. Uh, I was really humbled by that. Um, so I would love to be able to converse with you guys more. So over on Twitch, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Um, but now I'm just going to get back to the video. This is what the browser looks like. Um, now this functions in a very similar way to App Store on Mac OS. Um, the Windows Store, probably, I haven't really used that that much. Um, and very similar to iOS App Store and Google Play. Um, you can see a bunch of featured software here. So just the most popular. You've got categories. Um, so you can go to music and audio, for example, and see different software there. 
and you can search for software you can see what software you've got installed here for example I can see what updates I need to do here now if you want to find something you can click on the search button now what we're going to do is a test I'm going to type in OBS now if I type in OBS it's auto completed the studio so I'm gonna click that now a confusing thing for new users is that I've typed in OBS studio and I've got three different OBS studio packages here there's actually a lot more than this, but you can see here where it's coming from. I have OBS Studio, and it says here official repositories. That's coming from the official maintained repositories of developers of Manjaro. Then I have a Snap version here that's coming from Snap Packages, and you can see OBS Studio Titan. Now, as you can see here, rather than a download icon, I have a trash can icon because this is the version I have installed. Now, if you search for something and it doesn't show up, uh, you can go down to repositories I can see here official repositories in this um, filter if you want to put it that way it will show you your official repositories if you click on the AUR it's going to show you all the versions of OBS studio or anything that has OBS studio in its descriptional name uh, inside the AUR and you can see here there's quite a lot of stuff because you might want something quite specific snap you can see here and Flatpak, there isn't one on Flatpak, at least under this naming convention. Anyway, so I'm going to click all again. Um, and you can click on these and view information about them. You can click install and it's going to install it. It's going to ask you for your password. Uh, these two files here, like dependencies and files, the two tabs, they're not really for new users. You don't need to even worry about this. All it does is basically say these are the files this needs to run and it will install them if they don't have them already on your computer. And files is basically just going to say, these are the files inside of this package. It's like, okay, great. As long as it works, it works. Any screenshots, links, uh, information about the pieces of software will be there. This will be the same for all the software. The same for the Snap one. The Snap packages usually tend to have more information here because they're maintained in a more visual way via Ubuntu and Canical the way that it is. And then the AUR. Now you will notice that this doesn't say install, it will say build. Um, if I click this download icon here, it's going to say one pending operation. It'll click apply, right? And it's going to say, hey, it's going to remove this and install this. I don't want to do that, right? But it will ask you for your password. When you click apply, it will just install. The same thing will happen if you click build. It will say apply and it will start to build this package. That is because on the AUR, most packages are on GitHub. If you haven't used GitHub before, don't worry. It's pretty straightforward. Um, GitHub is just a kind of place where developers keep their software and update them constantly. Um, you don't need to worry about it. It's it's really simple. From an end user perspective, you're not really going to notice any difference from actually using the software. If you click build or click install, it's going to end up on your computer and you're going to be able to use it which is what you have a computer for. If you are already got to the point of downloading and installing stuff anyway, I think if you're already thinking about going to Linux, then GitHub, hopefully you've come across. If not, like I said, end result is gonna be functioning software anyway. Um, what's gonna happen is that the main difference you're gonna have between the official repositories, Snap and AUR, is that AUR, um, packages and a lot of the official ones are from github as you can see if I click this um, it's going to probably build this from github it does it depends on the software but you're going to get two different types you're going to get the github and the kind of packages uh, and those are going to be maintained slightly differently to snap and flatpak it's better to view snap and flatpak packages as apps uh, self-contained uh, they don't really put files anywhere else official repositories and AUR build the software. It takes a little bit longer to install this software uh, when you click build um, because it has to basically compile the files. Uh, they're not compiled, um, whereas like Snap and Flatpak are. The Snap and Flatpak packages have a little bit of overhead. So um, I would definitely say um, if you have it, if you find something and it's on the official repository, you're probably going to be good. If it's not there and it's in the AUR, um, then you you know then you're going to be good. But if it's not in either of those, in the very unlikely chance it's not in either of those, then and it's in Snap or Flatpak, then use that. If we just browse through a little bit here, we can see that 
there are lots of different ones you can see where they come from and discord you can see there are different ones here flat pack and snap both showing up here um, and this is maintained in the snap repository this is maintained in the flat pack repository the versions are identical because the discord developer has done it for both so this is pretty straightforward. There's so much software available for Linux that you don't really need to be concerned about not finding something. Sometimes you'll find some software and it won't be what you want. So if I type in here OBS Studio, right? I get OBS Studio from the official repository. And as I've just said, that would be like, great, this is on the official one. I should do that because that's first and the AUR second and Flatback and Snapper third. But the in my case, the OBS Studio that's in the official repositories doesn't have the plugins that you would normally use for streaming on Twitch, like from Streamlabs. So um, follows and stuff like that that pop up on the screen. That's not default for some reason. OBS Studio Titan, this is the one that I use. Um, it's the one I'm recording this video with um, and it has all the extra plugins, so I use that. So if you find some software and it's not for you, then you can always try another version. If I go down here, you can see um, I have Slack here. This Slack is actually a snap package, not um, from the official repositories or the AUR. If I type in Slack here, you can see here there's a snap package, which as you can see, it's got a remove icon because this is the one I have. There's a flat pack package here. Uh, there's a few more. Um, if I go to the repositories, you can see there's an official wrapper for the for there I could use. There's AUR versions as well, loads of those. But for me, the better experience happened to be a snap package. So um, that's the one that I'm using. But I did try three others before I found this one that I liked the most. So there's so much software you can find this way um, and definitely if you are thinking like, okay, I want to install um, something really specific, then you know normally it'll be on the AUR. If you're just a casual user, this is where you can find, you can browse everything here. You can click on productivity and be like, okay, I need to find something. Oh, there's one password here, evolution here. Um, and yeah, so you can find everything that you want. You can browse what's available to you. Um, and that's really important. It's not just, um, browsing on the web, it's actually looking for software that's new. Um, and you can see what is actually available. And if you want to look for something online, fire up Google and you know, I got brave here, for example, fire up that and and go into Google and type in, you know, Steam, Linux or whatever. And, um, and people say, Oh, yeah, there's a version of it, you know, um, it actually comes default with Manjaro. But if I type in Steam, for example, um, I've got it installed by default here, but it's in the repositories, the official repositories. Um, it's in the AUR, um, it's in Snap probably as well. I haven't been here or Flatpak. It's in Flatpak here, as you can see. So um, there's so much available. So I don't think you should be ever concerned about finding software. Um, as I said earlier in this video, this video is really aimed at new people who are coming over to Linux. I really want to help those guys out. Um, so if you are new to Linux, um, definitely drop a comment below. Um, if you need any help with anything, I really love to help people um, switching over to Linux. Um, I feel like it's almost doing such a good work for the world. So um, if you do have any problems in switching over or any questions about Linux, drop a comment down below. I just want to point out that uh, this year I'm making a few changes to my channel. Every Sunday will be a release of a video. But every Friday at 8 p.m. Central European time, I'm going to be streaming live uh, for an hour over on Twitch initially. And I'm going to be basically covering important news events related to technology. I'm going to help people out with any questions they've got, that kind of like a live tech support. And also what I would really love is I kind of engage with quite a lot of you in the comment sections below. I really like that. I really like engaging with the community. So it'd be great to take the conversation over there and continue it uh, live on uh, stream. That would be awesome. So from next week, from the published date of this uh, video, it's going to be uh, that week onwards. And hopefully this turns into something good. I am very excited about it. I'm a little pensive, but Hopefully, if uh, some of you guys turn up and we can continue the conversation there, it'll be a lot of fun. So 8 p.m. Central European time, 
uh, that's when it will be on and every Sunday will be a release of a new video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like the video if you do like it. Um, I made some great progress last year. You guys are awesome um, with uh, progressing my channel forward and um, helping uh, other people with Linux and stuff like that. So I really am happy about that. Uh, if you do like videos from me, then do subscribe and hit the bell icon as well so you can get notified when I release new ones. And uh, if you want to chat with me, um, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for Twitch and you can head over there as well as Twitter and you can go there as well all under the same name. As always, this has been Robert and I will see you in the next video or on Twitch.